So now I'm happy to be joined by uh, Congressman Guy Reschenthaler of the 14th District, which includes Washington, Fayette, Green, and Westmoreland County. Guy, thanks for coming on again. Hey, John, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So here's the thing. Uh, I wasn't planning on asking you about this because I didn't know about it, and I don't know if you've heard about this yet or if, if, if anybody, and if this was just laid on everybody today, uh, are you aware of this story about the uh, the disinformation governance board of the of the uh, Department of Homeland Security? I am not aware of that. Okay. Um, I have been in in both all day in committee meetings, so you were breaking the news to me live. But look, I can tell you that the left uh, the the left is very concerned about the the flow of information, and it's yeah. interesting because when they talk about disinformation and misinformation. There's a big difference between those two terms. Oh, good, because I was wondering what that is. is. You, yeah. So, so disinformation is what you would use in a military, like, psych operation where you, you're specifically, or counterintelligence, you're specifically putting out false information to confuse the opponent or to create chaos in another nation. Misinformation is just information that you disagree with, or it might be inaccurate. But remember that the Hunter Biden laptop story was considered, quote-unquote, disinformation. And it was considered misinformation when people uh, were talking about the connection with, with uh, Joe Biden. All that turned out to be absolutely correct. So you got to be very careful whenever the left labels something disinformation or misinformation. A lot of times it turns out to be true. It just so happens to almost always be something that hurts the Democrat narrative or the leftist agenda. I, I don't want to sneak up on you with this, but uh, but this this just this just came over less than an hour ago. So uh, I'll just read you what it says here. Homeland okay. Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas testified Wednesday that the Department of Homeland Security is creating a quote disinformation governance board to combat misinformation ahead of the 2022 midterms. Mayorkas appeared before the House Appropriations Subcommittee to discuss the fiscal 2023 budget for the Department of Homeland Security. They went on to say that this is uh, to help minority communities. Um, I don't know why that, why that specifically. Uh, I just saw this, uh, as I said, a little while ago. But um, dis and misinformation are, are kind of the same thing. It's just whether one is made up and one is not, or one is purposely made up, or one is... is one is spread by someone who knows they're spreading information that isn't true, and one isn't. This is an accident, I guess. That's what, right. I, that's what I'm getting right. at. Well, well, okay, well, look, with what my work is saying, um, that's incredibly rich. How about instead of worrying about this issue, which I don't think the government should be involved in, how about he does something to secure the southern border? And if he's worried about minority populations, what about the fact that you have criminal individuals that have criminal records that are violent offenders when they come here illegally, they go into minority populations and typically victimize those minority populations. You see this often with sanctuary cities. It's the rich, affluent, white liberal who, does, who, who wants the sanctuary city, but it's, it's the person that is a new immigrant that is, that is here working that is against uh, the, the uh, notion of a sanctuary city because it's him or her or his or her family that's going to get victimized by the illegal immigrants with violent records. It's a complete irony. Now, as far as disinformation and misinformation, Homeland Security focused on that, uh, these people have gotten it wrong over and over and over again. Let's just go back to COVID. Remember, I was, I, I was attacked because I said this likely came from a, a lab in Wuhan. I was ahead of Cotton. Turns out I was correct, and yep. so was Senator Cotton. Yet all that was labeled disinformation and misinformation. We were actually right on that. Then, if you remember the Hunter Biden story, I'm still shadow banned from Twitter because I shared a New York Post article. That Hunter Biden laptop story was absolutely correct, and that led to the Joe Biden victory that we had. Rasmussen polling clearly shows that I believe one in six or maybe one-third of Democrat voters didn't know about that. Hunter Biden story, yet had they known enough of them would have switched their votes to President Trump, that President Trump would have won Pennsylvania, Arizona, Wisconsin, uh, I believe Arizona as well. So if they're worried about elections, let's have the truth prevail. The American people will, will figure it out. But mark my words, John, whatever the left labels as disinformation and misinformation typically turns out to be true in the end, 
it also, again, almost always undercuts a Democrat narrative or their platform. Yeah, and uh, it's it's something that's very subjective. It's all about who's who's uh, declaring the dis and miss. Uh, and if you don't exactly. like it, it's misinformation. If you don't agree with it, yes, yes. And the American people are uh, smart, savvy, sophisticated. If you give a lot of information, the American people will get will get to the truth. The problem is when you have suppression of stories that we have skewed election. Again, we saw that with the Hunter Biden laptop story. We're talking to Guy Reschenthaler, congressman from the 14th District. Um, I wanted to also, obviously, ask you about some other things while I have a chance. Um, a lot can happen between now and November, but it's hard to believe. But six months from now, there's going to be a, an election, uh, the midterms. So I'm going to, I want to hit you with a hypothetical. If the Republicans were okay. to take, take control tomorrow morning, what would be your top priority? Well, mine would be limiting the power of the executive branch and making sure we're holding China accountable, the Biden administration accountable, and reining in the far-left policies. That would be the short-term goal. Mm -hmm. Long-term, obviously, is job creation, economic strength, and vitality, uh, also projecting American power abroad by strengthening our military, specifically our Navy. But um, to, to talk about us retaking the House, John, we're going to take the House. It's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it, and remember, in the last 100 years, we've only gone from a Democrat-controlled House to a Republican-controlled House four times. This is actually very rare. But you could see the biggest Republican majority that we've had since the Great Depression. And with that majority, we are going to have extensive oversight investigation. We're going to try to ferret out what all the connections were with Hunter Biden, the oligarchs in, in Russia, uh, the Burisma board, the natural gas company in Ukraine, the fact that he flew on Air Force Two to China and came back with a billion dollar hedge fund. We're going to get to the bottom of that. We're also going to get to the bottom of how much Joe Biden knew, because it's quite remarkable that he said he knew nothing about Hunter Biden's business dealings, yet had repeated meetings in the White House with Hunter Biden's uh, business associates. And there are emails saying that Joe Biden was going to pay the legal bills of Hunter Biden's uh, business. So it's quite quite remarkable that you would have largesse on the fact of uh, Joe Biden to pay to pay these bills. Quite remarkable. And then, of course, the email referring to the big guy. Um, I really feel that once we get done with this oversight and investigation, we're going to be able to show that Joe Biden has much more in common with Whitey Bulger than he does with JFK. Um, <laughs> it's very possible we're going to show a lot of corruption with the entire Biden family. Well, if you don't watch Fox or Newsmax uh, and or listen to conservative radio, you probably really don't know about what's been coming coming out about Hunter Biden. Uh, the rest of the media have ignored it. Uh, it's, it's stunning. But if you watch Fox, which I do, you think this is a big story. It's not, unless you were watching or listening to conservative uh, news, uh, uh, um, you know, and and it's just not the, the I just saw last week the networks had had uh, devoted a total of 52 seconds to the story that uh, it's, there, it's well, not it, out there. It's just not there. Well, it's hard to believe. Well, look, the leg the legacy media will never cover this story. Um, and if they do, they'll they'll cover it very quickly. But that matters less and less, John. We're never going to be able to look that the mainstream media, I call them the legacy media. It's basically the PR firm of the Democrat Party. That, mm -hmm. That's all they're doing. But the American people, again, are very smart and sophisticated. Joe Rogan gets 10 million downloads a day. At CNN's highest rating level, they're about 800,000. Maybe they'll be, they'll be lucky to get a million. So Joe Rogan eclipses CNN tenfold. And there's a reason for it. It's because Joe Rogan is inquisitive. He's covering a lot, just like your show covers a lot, just like you have Fox and Newsmax and other, um, other outlets. The American people know if they want to get, the sort, if they want to get a, a well-rounded view, they've got to look elsewhere beyond mainstream media. And that's why mainstream media is dying and failing. Are there impeachable offenses by Joe Biden in those emails? It's very possible, but we're not going to know unless we have the oversight investigation. But I will warn, I will warn uh, against this. We know historically that during impeachment, the nation usually rallies around the president. President Trump's numbers after impeachment, and it was an absolute bogus impeachment. I, I don't need to relitigate that. Yeah. But his numbers were higher than they ever were after impeachment. I'm not sure we want to do that to Joe Biden um, 
because we are going to beat him in 2024, whether it's President Trump that runs, Ron DeSantis, Christina, who, who, whoever runs is going to beat Joe Biden or whoever they put in. So let's be very careful uh, that we don't get in, the, we don't have poor tactics get in the way of an excellent strategy. I have about a minute left with Guy Reschenthaler, congressman from the 14th District. Uh, and I have to ask you this. Uh, John Kerry said a few days ago that the natural gas industry has, according to him, of course, 10 years to justify its existence. Um, and lots of people in your district work in that business. How hard is it going to be to reduce or reverse, I should say, the policies already put in place by these lunatics? It's going to be very difficult. They've done lasting damage to our power abroad in our energy sector. However, if we retake the house and we um, we make sure we streamline the permitting process, we should be able to get more drilling. And of course, we need to have more pipelines. But the, the sick irony of all this, John, is that um, John Kerry flies all over the world in a private jet, of course. lecturing us about how we need to reduce our CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. What he doesn't say is that the only nation that signed on the Paris Climate Accord that's reduced CO2 emission has been the United States of America. And we've done it largely because Western Pennsylvania is exporting so much natural gas, which burns, burns very cleanly. But it's, it's amazing that he says nothing about China, which emits more CO2 than the United States, Europe, and Japan combined. Um, that's how big of a deal it is. So if you want to reduce CO2 emissions, if you want to do something that's good for the environment, you unleash drilling here in the United States and export cheap, abundant, and clean Pennsylvania natural gas to the world. Yeah, and I see Good Morning America did a segment today on how uh, uh, climate change is affecting people's allergies. But I, I don't have time to get into that. Uh, maybe next time. I appreciate you coming on, though, Guy. Hey, thanks, John. I okay. appreciate you. Take care. Okay.